Ladies and gentlemen, our feature presentation. We give you the Comic Collector's Academy. With your hosts, Angus Pinland and Jake Jones. Hey guys, welcome back to the Comic Collecting Academy. I am Angus. Whoop. This is... My name is Jake. Exactly. Um, this is episode two. And one day we're going to get better at these intros. <laughs> uh, yep. But today Scripted. the topic is figures, comics, and collecting. The realm of collecting. I am super excited for this one. Mm -hmm, me too. So, um, as there you go. I was I'm just going to say, Jake and I are, are very big collectors. Uh, we bonded over that a few years prior. We collect. Yes. Every kind of Marvel figure. Uh, any any. Well, I wouldn't say every kind, because what the fuck is a frog, man? But that's that's a discussion we'll get into. <laughs> that's a discussion we'll get into later. Yeah, um, I would say... Um, originally, I would say I started out collecting Star Wars, and that's still my primary source of what I collect. But definitely over the past couple of years, me falling in love with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Marvel has definitely made its impact on my collection. And I would say Angus is definitely Marvel-oriented. Yes, sir. Um, and a little bit of DC, dab a little bit there. Um, oh, gosh, where to even start? I'm so excited. Uh, do, <laughs> where do you... Um, so, figures. Um, do you want to talk about just sort of the current collecting world in terms of what it's like right now to be a collector well if you okay so it depends on like what realm you're looking at because if you're looking at the the realm of marvel legends and uh like, well, let's let's Black just start series. there let's start marvel legends we both collect marvel legends i'm sure some people listening to also let's let's start there all right so with the the realm of marvel legends um it's it's like a hit and miss a lot and if you collect marvel legends you know what i mean um the build of figures are usually Pretty on point, but the figures you have to collect to build the figure, not not so much. They're fucking disgusting exactly. to look at. Um, we get a lot of peg warmers. Uh, I think there's, a lot of peg warmers. There's always a peg and, warmer. And every every line, there's there's a fucking peg warmer. Um, like I get the point of the peg warmer. They're supposed to be there to fill that company's area on the store shelf. Um, I mean, I get it. But let's say, I mean, what, like is six to nine characters are usually per wave for a Marvel Legends series around there. Mm -hmm. And there's one build a figure. Lately, I would say the past four years, probably the past four years have always been, I'm only interested in one, maybe, maybe two from one line and usually never the build. For, per, you know, that's for exception. You know, we've seen, like, the Build-A-Figure Kingpin. Phenomenal. Um, I mean, there's some Build-A-Figures that have come out recently that are just, you know, like, Bro Thor. I mean, just great Build-A-Figures that I would, uh, like, the um, the in-game Thanos. That's the only one I've ever bought all of the figures because I, uh, I just really wanted that one. Um, the bigger issue is that... Hasbro has said, you know what, you know, we got a lot of money doing Kingpin build a figure, but we would make a lot more if we just released him as a figure singly and make him a lot better. And they've done that with their Spider-Man retro line, which are great figures, but it it it's kind of a dick move yeah. to do that in my opinion. <laughs> they've done that just too with like like a lot of the uh, build a figures. A like lot. Ultron, Ultron was a build a figure. And now you can get you him, know uh, singular that whole yeah that whole 80th anniversary crusade they did, they did uh, Juggernaut the the figure they did for that two pack phenomenal looks better than the build a figure but they just turn their back and reissue it, um, which again I know it's a company they got to make money but in terms of a collect a collector it's kind of a slap in the face because now why is what incentive do I have now to go in purchase six figures out of nowhere when I should think, oh, well, you know what? They're going to release this figure in two years, so I'll just wait. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's they're hurting themselves because that's the mentality I have. Well, yeah, and that, I mean, I agree with that mentality. 
Because there's really, it, it, there's no point at that at that stage, you know? I would also say... It takes away the, the whole incentive. Un- the incentive, yes. Um, I would also say in terms of the whole umbrella of Marvel, Levin, Marvel, Marvel Legends being a hit and miss, uh, this also goes with any any brand, any line that they've done the facial scan tech on. The facial scan tech... Um, when it first started out, I believe it started with the Black Series Young, Han Solo being its first candidate for that, which it looked great. Um, you could tell it was a little rough because it was the first one, but I would say mainly it's gotten better every figure they produced it with. Mm-hmm. But talk about hit and miss. Some figures look amazing, the likeness is there, and sometimes the likeness or just the face scanning print itself is total garbage. I got a I got a vision figure because you know WandaVision's big and um, I I didn't have one prior so I was like okay well I'll go ahead and go out and I'll get a you know a fucking Wanda and Vision and yeah. both of them look derpy as shit um, <laughs> it's just they they don't really put a much uh, as much like love into their into their uh, craft as they used to because if you look at older Marvel Legends figures they have a shit ton of diversity. Every oh, okay. so the, the two ones you bought, uh, what are they older Marvel Legends? No, the ones that I bought, they're, um, it was that two pack for Infinity War. Oh, oh, okay, that one, that one, that one. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's weird because it's a, it's a, it feels like it's a double standard because at the same time, I think more than ever, companies are trying to appeal to the collector because that that's where they know the money is mm-hmm. they know that's where the money is because we're going to shell out 20 30 dollars for one marvel legends because that's what we want we want to put it on our shelf but in terms of the quality as in terms to what they produced back then for kids like what are you doing like where's the uniqueness where's the quality and sometimes a painted face sculpt in my opinion looks way miles better than the face scan times yeah, I bought a um I recently on eBay bought a Hulkbuster Iron Man uh original <gasps> Marvel Legends. That very is nice. that is a very very, very nice. nice figure. That's the one with all the posable fingers. Yes. Right? Talk about posable fingers where that just went by the wayside in detail, man. The old Marvel Legends are a force to reckon with. And not only that, but the build of figures. I mean, fucking Galactus is a build of figure. It's brilliant, and they produce what like twenty figures per wave. So it's like you have Galactus's ankle, like that's a piece you have. You have to collect all his ankles, wrists, head, chest. There's so many more to collect, but at the end of the day, you're you have a, a you have a very nice figure to display, and you should be very proud that you collected. Or like Giant Man, mm-hmm. I mean, just massive scale figure that looks great. Um, unfortunately, those are just so so much on the aftermarket. That it's almost possible to collect those but if those are I those are relics of the past days. now we don't do those oh. anymore oh you yeah know? um uh speeding into this build a figure and just really nice figures and stuff i have a pretty bad opinion about things like Haslab and kind of company source gofundme pages like that but i can't argue that that sentinel that has lab kind of came out like the 400 hundred dollar sentinel that they uh the release and how big it is. I mean, what was it like something over like 20 something, 30 something inches tall. That is a huge figure. Definitely for the price you're getting what you're the, the size of it. Um, but only if they put that much love into the builder figures, they would have no problem selling people like Frogman. Fucking Frogman. <laughs> it still baffles me. Frogman as a whole baffles me. I think what they were trying to do is appeal to someone that I fall into this all the time. You buy a figure just because it looks cool. It's just unique. Ah, yeah, dude. Frogman's fucking cool as shit. I know. I know. I know. I know. But just the other day, I was walking around, and um, is it Hasbro that does them? They did... uh, They've been really, like, um, pushing forward the whole... uh, Master of the Universe figures out just sort of like as a retro line and I don't watch Master of the Universe. I know enough to steal what, you know, He-Man, Skeletor, I know those characters and stuff. 
but the figures that they have of what they they look like the original versions of the Masked Universe figures, but they're updated with face scan and newer articulation. They look so cool. Just aesthetically, like Skeletor, oh my god, man. I mean, it just looks cool to pose around and mess around with. And sometimes I fall into that trap as a collector, and it's hard whenever you try to streamline your collection because it's like, I'm getting this just because it looks cool. I have no personal connection with it. I haven't even seen the show. Yeah. So I gotta watch out. Um, but on that, because they look unique. They're so unique. And I feel like the attention to detail in terms of the packaging, the articulation, and the quality of the figure, it's just brilliant. And that's why I'm attracted to it, because I know it's a quality product. And when I see, you know, some C-list comic book character in Marvel Legends, I, I don't even look at it. I just, I see it in my peripheral, and I just walk right past it. Yeah, that's actually why I started collecting uh, DC. Because Todd McFarlane... Yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, Todd McFarlane mm-hmm. puts so much love and care into his work. Those figures, man, yeah. they are fucking on another level with their. Build. I would say that um, things like NECA, I do, re- I do kind of like NECA. I've I recently bought their. Um, it's a movie called They Live. I forget uh, his name's. Neva, I forgot his name, uh, but it's from a movie I really liked, and it's one of their eight-inch ones that has like cloth goods. Mm-hmm. which cloth goods are always a plus. Um, but McFarland, uh, their articulation is pretty solid, right? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty legit. Uh, the things like, I appeal more to NECA because they make more like niche cult following movie figures, like Jaws, Gremlins, that type of stuff. Um, and their detail is like McFarland. I mean, it is just like Diamond Slick. It's just really good detail, but the articulation's pretty bad. Like, I just bought... For the longest time, I've always wanted a Back to the Future Biff figure. And they finally made one. And I bought it. And the articulation is so poor. It's really... However it's posed in the box is really how you're posing it on your shelf. Mm-hmm. And I had him sitting up there. And the paint looks good. It's it's re- it's a really nice sculpt. And, dude, it the shelf right here... He was sitting about right here. Mm-hmm. And I have carpet. And he fell from there to the carpet in both... Of his legs broke off. Both of what his legs. What the fuck? And the thing is with the legs is like you can't really super glue together because once they're out, there's no way you can pose them. He looks like no. He, he, Biff Tan didn't look right when I tried to glue his legs together. So <laughs> it's I like NECA, but I would say McFarlane. I, I don't collect any of their figures, but I have seen stuff and they're kicking it over there with the the detail. Dude, they're fucking the Batman who laughs. They released a version of him that has yeah. uh, wings. Um, I'm not super sure why he does. I know in the comics there's an explanation, but that wingspan is absolutely insane. Because it, it's awesome. with one figure, you get that wingspan. And meanwhile, Hasbro had you collect fucking five figures for Vulture. Whenever yeah, Homecoming like was you a get thing. a piece of a wing. Like how? That's so stupid. Like Vulture's entire thing is that he has fucking wings. You're gonna get, you're exactly. gonna make me fucking build him. Like, Unfortunately, that I guess that was before the time where they've started making these. I think they call them deluxe figures, where they come with more accessories. I feel like if they were to re-release him, they would have him with wings as a deluxe figure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, why? What the hell? That's his main gimmick. And it's just, I don't know, man. It, the way that, like, the center of gravity on those figures that I, like, the McFarlane figures, it's insane. Because they, uh, I, I, how I have them displayed is I have, like, the wings fully extended. I want to show full yeah. fucking wings, man, because I think that's cool as hell, right? Yeah. He doesn't fall over, like, at all. Wow. And that is a lot of weight on him, because of the center of gravity in the figures, it, it, it's meaningful, you know? Do you have a figure stand? No. He's not on... I mean, I have wow. figure stands, but he's not on That's one. That's great. Yeah, he's just standing. You see... Yeah, wow. I mean, you see figures with a little piss-poor cape, and they fall over like nothing. But yeah. That's that's cool. It's just... It's, wow. You know, it's it's consistent because I have... I've gotten a lot more since then. Um, all of them can stand fine. You know, they even come with a little... Li- with a little disc that you can put into their foot to make sure that they have, like, a flatter foot, like, a wider area to stand. 
Wow, okay, cool. And if That's... they're supposed to fly, they come with a figure stand so they can be posed flying. Okay, I might be looking over at McFarlane now. That's <laughs> unheard of in terms of collector, like, wow. I opened that, up uh, uh, Red Sun Superman, wow. was fucking blown away that, that, that they had a stand so you could pose him flying. Had no For idea. all the figures that I've bought recently, I'm very rarely... You're very rarely... That, the, I'm very rarely blown away, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Like, I... A few figures I've bought recently have just really blown me away. Like the Moff Gideon from the Black Series. Uh, beautiful. I mean, just a great rendition of it. As, as him as a figure. Um, NECA is uh, Terminator 2, Terminator. So many accessories, great face sculpt, great stuff. But I would say most of the time, I'm always looking at the figure thinking, I would have done that different. I would prefer that. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, that's great to hear that there's actually a company out there that cares about care the collectors. About the yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, they're kind of supposed to, but, oh man. Um, I would say in my opinion, I think black series, Star Wars black series is doing a little bit better than Marvel legends mm -hmm. in terms of who they pack per line, because I, there's definitely not as many Star Wars characters you can pick from as terms of Marvel, in terms of peg warmers. So I feel like peg warmers, I would much prefer an Ewok over Frogman. Mm -hmm. Even though I probably wouldn't pick up either of them, but I would probably pick up an Ewok. Yeah. Um, they've done a lot of great stuff. They're also doing, it, it, it sort of coincides with what they do with Marvel. They do, like we've seen the um, Apocalypse and Thanos as the deluxe versions, like just bigger figures like the Venom they've come out with. Um, they're doing like a Boba Fett that's got a whole sh uh, whole shit ton of accessories that look beautiful. They did Zeb from an animated series. He looks really good. Um, their packaging also, I almost like their packaging a little bit because they're more stylized. Have you seen the new style of the Black Series packaging where it's sort of like, it looks a little more stylish. Um... But at the end of the day, you know, neither one of those ever have a figure stand. Mm -hmm. And I would say either both of them still could use more in the detail department. So at the end of the day, it sounds like McFarlane's the one first place. It, I was, I was fucking, I couldn't believe that it had a, it had a fucking stand in it. You know, it's just For real, man. I, and awesome. every figure comes with a little uh, laminated card. It's like a, like a trading card looking thing and it, it has huh. the character's backstory on it with uh the cover wow. art and it's just it's really cool the amount of detail that goes into it but i you know it's funny because dc back in the day they they had like little to no variants in figures they were all the same body type same mm -hmm. body build but this is back in the day when, where marvel was releasing unique figures you know yeah and now it's kind of swapped um, I yeah, have. I can't tell you how many figures I have of the same body type from Marvel Legends. You know. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, like the ab crunch articulation is, I would say, re pretty new in terms of articulation, and that really does hinder how you can uh, add detail, like sculpt the detail onto a figure. In terms of production, they're going to use a same mold, and they're just going to add. Uh, you know, sculpt on top of like a very basic six inch ab crunch, like deluxe figure. Mm -hmm. um, any day of the week, I would probably, in terms of Marvel figure, I would sacrifice our condition for detail. I would say for Marvel, you know, I think the ab crunch and that type of high articulation works really good for things like Spider Man. I mean, it's beautiful because you really want to pose him in dynamic situations um and they proved it like figures like kingpin you know there there doesn't need to be that much articulation because he's pretty much just gonna stand and be a static figure anyways um but there's a lot of figures that i feel like lack detail that don't really need a whole bunch of articulation so but yeah at the end of the day detail over anything is really going to shine um one thing i did want to talk about 
is I think ma- now more than ever we have seen the true scum and villainy of scalpers mm-hmm. in the collecting world. Because of the time we're in and COVID, this is where I think a lot of this has risen. Um, it's mainly terrible in the trading card community, um, as I, I can usually keep tabs on other hobbies in terms of where I'm at. And a lot of these stores restock in the morning, you know, Target, Walmart, places like that. And since a lot of these people have don't have a job right now because of COVID, they don't have anything else to do but wake up at 6 o'clock whenever these stores open and form, you know, a 30-person line and buy out an entire store of stock. Mm-hmm. Not saying that all of those people are scalpers. No, no, no. There's people in there that really do care. If if I knew that my store was going to have a fresh case of Moff Gideon's or you know like uh, Marvel Legend Cyclops, <laughs> uh, I would be there in the morning. If I knew that I could get my, hand, I would buy one. I'm not the one to buy two. Since I'm a collector, I don't want to put someone else in other shoes and have to make them pay double. I would. That's just me. I would never do that. But unfortunately, there's people out there, and in, in correlation with the store not putting limits on some of these things, they'll go in there and they'll buy an entire store. They'll buy over six, eight hundred dollars worth of figures, and they'll make sixteen hundred dollars at the end of the day because them all. And people will pay forty dollars for a dollar figure. Mm-hmm. It's sad. It is really sad that people are using this as a form to make money, and unfortunately, people let it happen because. I, I can't even single out myself. Whenever the whole rise of hearing Mysterio was going to be in Spider-Man Far From Home, I was out everywhere looking for that comic book version of Mysterio. And I ended up paying $40 for it on eBay. And I, I sucked into it. Even though, at the time, I do believe he was discontinued. So, it's not really scalping. It's more or less just you're paying for the rarity. Mm-hmm. Um, but... People will pay almost triple for those figures just because of how hard they get. And stores now, because of the time we're in, don't get that much stock. And they don't really... Hasbro doesn't really stock their shelves a whole lot either. They might get a max of two cases of a wave. They're gone within minutes. And you'll never find one. And at this point, it, it kind of ruins the fun like we've talked about. It's getting the fun of finding something in store that's sort of the fun of it and whenever you buy something online not only are you seven dollars plus tax for shipping which makes the figure forty dollars yeah it ruins the fun it ruins the fun for everyone part of collecting is the hunt you know it's the hunt of finding the figure that you want uh yeah i mean some of my some of like the way I'm passionate for collecting, some of my best memories are running into stuff in the wild. I mean, just off the top of my head, I remember when I was younger, Force Awakens came out and I heard that they had a old Han Solo figure they were coming out with. And a Finn dressed up in his storm his first order stormtrooper gear with the red blood on his uh helmet and I wanted those so bad I couldn't find him anywhere. Until one day I walk into my local Target and they had not a single Star Wars figure on the shelf, except for an old Han Solo and a Finn with his Stormtrooper gear on. I mean, just moments that I will always remember just how excited I was. But hmm. ruins the fun, man. It, it, it sucks. <sighs> I remember I, uh, I, won, I walked into like a Walmart once and found Anti-Venom. And I like almost... I like cream oh, myself yeah. for one, but I, I, I like lost my shit, you know. <laughs> it's just that's that's the fun of it. And that's the fun of being a collector is finding the things out in the wild and yeah, because we I, don't know I what the fuck we're gonna do with it whenever we go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh no, no, yeah. Some I mean sometimes just the hunt outweighs the actual figure itself. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I, I store pride storing my Moff Gideon on my shelf because I know not I know a lot of people are still looking for him, or like my Dark Gray, found found her in the wild. I know a lot of people are still looking for that. So these people need to go out and find a real job and quit making money off people like us. I definitely think that like scalping as a whole has been uh, more recognized than it was prior because of what happened with the uh, Xbox One or like Xbox Series X and oh. PS5. 
<laughs> I like seeing I have all never the heard memes. anything like that before. Ever. Yeah, I know. And I, I like I like seeing all these memes where people are complaining about it and people who collect are like, Oh, this is the first time this happened to you. Oh hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like Welcome to the club, pal. Yeah, like this is what we go through all the time. Oh my gosh, man. I remember whenever they were like releasing uh the, the build a figure Infinity War Thanos, that was like fucking a hundred dollars on eBay. Like a hundred to two hundred. Oh. Like oh, easy. Yeah. I way overpaid for my my build a figure kingpin. I mean I probably I don't want to disclose the amount, but it was a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> or the, the, the gauntlet. Figure. Like the gauntlet, whenever that was coming out. Oh, that, that, was that, entire, out? that was an entire that was an entire fiasco. Shit. And now, now you can find them for like thirty dollars or less. Mm-hmm. I fell for that. I fall for a lot of stuff. It patience is a great thing when you have it. I do not have patience, and I pay for it literally. Well, the problem is, is, like sometimes you have patience, but then you don't jump on it, and you miss a, a figure, and it be, it gets even more you know, more expensive. It's the game you play. Like the gauntlet. When that thing came first came out, dude, I mean, that thing was selling for triple the amount on eBay. Oh, and God, now, yeah. That was like 400 can, for the fucking gauntlet. You, oh, yeah, you can get it, you know, dirt cheap now. But other things, like, you might pass up on. I've passed up on a few Star Wars figures because they're always sitting on the shelf. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'll just pick it up another day. I don't want to spend that much today. And now, like, there was a... They did the Black Series Archives line where they kind of they redid some of the first figures they ever did with the new face skin stuff. And they did a Darth Maul. And he had this huge, ugly-looking plastic coat over him. He looked like trash. Mm-hmm. Face scan looked great. But I'm like, I, I'd rather have cloth good shit. And I always saw him. I always saw him. I'm like, I, I'll get him another day and I'll go and spend the extra couple of dollars and see if someone has a custom robe for him to make him look really nice. What I didn't know is that that hood comes off and he actually has cloth goods under it. I had no clue that. So I was like, well, when I first found out, I was like, okay, cool, I'll go grab him. And by the time I figured that out, he is the most expensive Black Series figure on the secondary. On the secondary Easily. what? You cut out. On the secondary market. Mm-hmm. Easily. If I went on eBay right now, I'd be paying over $400. Sealed Jesus. for that Darth Maul figure. Insane amount of money for a re-release of the the original figure is cheaper than the re-release, which blows my mind. Um, but uh, yeah, patience is great. But like you just said, it's that thing of when you want to jump on something until something just blows out of the water. It's crazy. Yeah, I remember I wanted to buy uh, like this Wolverine figure. Um, I have always wanted to like have, I, I had one whenever I was younger and I don't have one anymore. So I was like, okay, well I, I want to purchase one. And I kept on seeing this one on Amazon. I was like, oh, I'll get it eventually. I'll get it eventually. And I never, I never did. And now it's going for fucking like 40, 80, you know, it, it's, it's oh, hard as shit to find. Golly. It... Especially now with all these shows coming out, it really fluctuates the prices on everything. I mean, obviously, whenever a a product is in the limelight, like Marvel, Wanda and Scarlet Witch and Vision figures are going to go up in price naturally. Like oh, Star God, Wars figures. Yeah. Anytime there's a Star Wars movie in store, whenever I'm trying to collect vintage Star Wars stuff, I, I stop collecting. I only collect my vintage Star Wars stuff whenever Star Wars is not popular. That's the key. Um, like, if I was to go and buy a Kenner 1977 uh, Han Solo, large head Han Solo, mm-hmm. n- uh, normal, I could probably find him for under $80, maybe 50 60 depending on the quality. Whenever there's a Star Wars movie in theater, all that stuff doubles in price. I mean, you're, you're paying $100, $150, $180 for... What was once a forty fifty dollar figure? It's it's crazy how much stuff like that just popularity drives through the roof, um, and things like comic book stores. Whenever they know, like, hey, there's 
games coming out, they stock their store with all Marvel stuff, which just leads to the whole crusade of people wanting to buy more stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have put raisins in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> With that, with them putting out more stuff, especially for like Endgame, it draws in more scalpers. Yeah. Trading card. I mean, I keep tabs on I keep tabs on the trading card because uh, as cringy as it is, I do collect Star Wars autographs. And the thing with Star Wars autographs is you have to know exactly any autograph, really, any autograph. You have to know exactly what these things go for and exactly what you're looking for. If I wanted to go and get a certified PSA, uh, PSA authenticated, which means it's real, you've been sent it in. If I wanted to get an Adam Driver, I could go easily get a signed little 8x10 autograph for $200 mm-hmm. any day of the week. I would say that's about retail. Anything less than that's a good If I wanted to go buy a Star Wars Tops signed trading card, Star Wars tops, you know, a card about, you know, that big. With Adam Driver's Kylo Ren on it, I'd be paying $800 Mm -hmm. any day of the week. Just because the fact that it's on a trading card means that it was harder to get than a signed photo, I think, which raises the price incredibly. And people will take that price and flip it and scalp that price for over $1,000 and sell. I'm in a group where people throw around money like it's just like a snowball. Just, it doesn't mean anything. And scalpers, I mean, that's the whole reason the trading card industry is so big is because people make money off of it just because of it. Insane amounts of money are being thrown right now at the card community. I mean, especially sports. Oh, my God. Don't even get into that. I mean, just people... I mean, people have different priorities where they spend their money, and some people have thousands, thousands of dollars on these trading cards. Um, which is insane. But back to figures, totally the same way. Totally the same way. I mean, like, whenever they released that movie version of Mysterio, dude, if you found that thing in the wild, you might as well found a, a solid piece of gold ingot. Like, that, that's the exact same it was. And now, it's a common. Mm-hmm. It's right when they come out, and people just, they instantly buy them up, flip it, because people want the money. And then things like, they started off, like, things like Marvel Legends Cyclops. That thing has never gone down, and it's actually gotten bigger. Yeah. It's just, that price just keeps soaring through the sky. And it's whenever Still, they don't, don't know like... What happened to that one, but. Well, it's whenever they don't re-release a figure, you know? Yeah. Make, like, one or two of them for a line, and they mass-produce that one or two, like, uh, bleh, variations. And... Yeah. It just makes it soar in popularity because you can't get anything else like it. Yep. Whenever Black Series first came out, I remember buying the very first Black Series figures, like the X-Wing Luke, the Sand Trooper, Storm Trooper, and I bought Greedo. They have not made a Greedo since that was before Force Awakens, so like 2014, and they haven't remade a Greedo. And I have him, and he, I mean, he commands like 60 bucks because people want a Greedo. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they haven't released him again yet. I think they're actually re-releasing him, but in Kenner colors, so they still haven't released a movie version of Greedo yet. Um, but no, yeah, you're right, man. It's, it's, it's also, it's great whenever you, you've got something and you know it just, it boosts in value, but when the moment you want it, oh, it's it is kind of like a drug addiction because it's like whenever if I see a figure because I didn't I wasn't going to collect DC at all but then Marvel Legends went down and DC shit yeah. went up and they started releasing cooler stuff and now it's like I feel back back when I did whenever I was collecting Marvel Legends I was like if I find it in the wild I'm freaking the fuck out it's just chasing that yeah. high you know chasing that uh yeah it doesn't help that like any any movies or any good movies Marvel have like been in the theater so that also does their case mm-hmm. but no i get it um um i i i mean i like good product and i tend to fluctuate whenever a company's just they're on a bad streak and i move to a different thing and i start collecting that it also feels like that company's just 
throw out all their pre-orders, and I never see those pre-orders until like seven months. <laughs> mm-hmm. you no, know, I that's pre-ordered. Also a... thing that bugs me. What? That that's a thing that bugs me sometimes. <laughs> I pre-ordered a uh, fucking Batman Beyond figure at Target that's gonna be delivered. It, it's a pretty fucking nice looking figure, but it's not gonna be released until like March, like March yeah. or May. That isn't too bad. Um, but like Stan Lee, whenever the Stan Lee was coming out and you could pre-order that at Target, that like took an entire year. Remember that? I never found him in a store. I don't know if he was an exclusive or not. I I pre-ordered. <laughs> I guess I pre-ordered him, and I had that pre-order for a long time. Mm-hmm. I I I still don't think I've ever seen him in a store. I, I he they don't make him anymore. But I don't know if it was a Target exclusive or anything. Um. But yeah, or like you know, it's bad when the pre-order sells out. Mm-hmm. Like good fucking, good fucking riddance. There's no way you're finding that in the wild. All PlayStation fives and Xbox All, Series yeah. X. It's just the same shit, you know. Um. So you want to make the transition and talk about comics? Talk about the comic collecting world. For a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So, I don't know about you, but whenever I go into a comic store, I'm mainly looking for issues that have eye-catching uh, covers. Oh, duh. You know, I don't... I don't read them. <laughs> what the fuck is reading? I'm illiterate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I, I'm blind. Yeah, um, <clears throat> our, our local comic book store is called Bedrock City. Um, and out of all the comic book stores I've gone to, it is the most consistent with the best prices. Mm-hmm. I, I always enjoy going in there just looking. They, they usually always have something new. I could go probably once a week and usually have some shelf. They, there's a lot of people in the areas where those are located that they come in with a lot of stuff to buy. They always have cool stuff. And they are always – their comic books have good prices um, too. They're always running like a – 50% off back issue sale. Mm-hmm. And one can go mad whenever that happens. You can get a shit ton of comic books for a hell of a good price. But yeah, man. Like, if it's got a cool cover, that's the only reason I want them is to display them. So... Yeah, I have if it, if it's got a just cover, a shit ton um, just kind of sitting that I haven't read because um, I just haven't... Yeah. I don't know. I just or, like the cover of them. I don't... Like, I don't want to open them because I know they're worth something. I don't want to... Mm-hmm. You know, um, the, uh, the original issue uh, that introduced Miles Morales, it was like the death of Peter Parker. That goes for, yeah. oh my god, that goes for so much now. Actually, I'm going to pull up eBay because I'm, I'm curious to see how much that goes for. Last time I checked, it was in the hundreds. Uh, but it's crazy because the, the same thing applies here with the scalpers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Comic, yeah, I mean, comic book collecting is a different world in terms of money because for some people, conditions everything. For me, as long as the colors are somewhat vibrant and there isn't like writing on the book, I really don't care how what the condition is because at that point, I'm getting a really nice key issue for a great price. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen some issues like it's still a lot of money, like $150 is a lot of money. But at Bedrock City, I remember I was seriously, seriously considering picking up X-Men issue number two for $150, which, again, is a lot of money, but I feel like issue two would have been, like, quadruple that. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I know X-Men one is a lot of money, but, I I mean, conditions everything, and it, it was pretty poor. But, um, for me... Like I saw, amazing I mean, fantasy, I mean, as it stands, um, twenty nine thousand dollars for amazing fan. That's that's the cheapest one, on eBay. Uh, the most expensive one is uh, seventy five thousand dollars because it has Stan Lee's autograph. Seventy five thousand dollars for those books. It's all. About condition. This is a hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! Fuck. And most of those are graded too. Yeah, that's. 
That's insane. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, just for me, it's all, for me, it's about price. I mean, I'm not shelling out that much money for a comic book. God, no. Especially now. Um, I remember for $20, uh, I went to Bedrock City. And out of nowhere, I felt like the price was wrong. And maybe it was just because of the edition, but they had the Fantastic... I'm a huge Fantastic Four collector. They had the Fantastic Four wedding issue. That if you look that up, I mean, the cover is just impeccable with how many characters have on it. And it's the, the comic book that was based off of the original Fantastic Four, the second one, the Rise of Quick, the Rise of Silver Surfer. The cover on that is insane. I'm, I think I can share my screen and show it. Beautiful. Um, but uh, on terms of... What type of lines do you collect? What do you like, mean by lines? Like what? Like comic lines? If if you're going into a comic book store and you're looking for just Spider-Man. You know, Spider um, I've been really enjoying the Spider-Man Noir reissue that they're doing. Like the new Spider-Man Noir comic book lines. Those are really fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm collecting Spider-Man. 100%. Uh, especially if it's the older issues. Like I, 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 I'm so mad at myself. Because I was at fucking... Phase one before they uh, closed down, right? Yeah. Ooh, that's a pretty. That's yeah. a pretty cover. Yeah. But I was at I was at phase one, and I found this uh, Mysterio issue, and it was like first appearance Mysterio, and I didn't pick it up because it was twenty dollars. Now now you can't even find it. You can't even find it. That will do it, Mysteria. I mean, comic book sales, the price goes up specifically on what movie's coming out. Yeah. I remember I, another local store is called Space Cadets. It's a fun store to go into. They have a small area where they usually have some pretty good old retro vintage comic books. And I've been in, I've seen this single book about five or six times. I always pick it up. The condition is a little below what I like to have. It had some writing on it. And... It was a little faded, but for a measly, like, 16 or $18, it was the first appearance of King the Conqueror. Ooh. That's... And I kept picking up, and the only reason I was like, it's got the fan, I think it had, I think it was the Avengers. It was either that or the Fantastic Four on it, and it looked cool. I was like, oh, man. And... Whenever that whole stuff came out that apparently King the Conqueror is going to be an Ant, the new Ant-Man Quantumania movie, I went, shit. And that single moment I saw the Instagram post, I ran down there and they... They what? And I saw... They didn't have it. And I saw that it was, you know, $180, $200 on eBay. Sucks to suck. <laughs> That's just how it goes, and that's it's unfortunate. That's how it goes, but I mean, it's not anything new. Um, I think out of all of the collecting mediums, I think the pop community is probably the worst. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get into that. Yeah, the Funko Pop. <laughs> if you're collecting Funko Pops, then you know just how fucking terrible it is to collect those. Um, not that it they're is. bad figures, because they're, they're very, you know what I mean? Like, they're simple, they're nice, they're little, cute, little fucking, uh, What trinkets. they're trying to be, they're fantastic. It's the people surrounding it. It's fucking awful. It's the people. Because people are, are, are on eBay selling boxes for, like, double the price of the actual fucking pop of the, of the, the fucking figurine. And yep. it's just... I've never seen scalping so hard because pop figurines, if you collect them and you buy them, I'm sure all of you listening probably at least have one. You know it's supposed to be $10. I've seen pops yeah. go for 200 300 What the fuck kind of crack cocaine are you on? Oh, hell, dude. That's not even the start of it. I, You know, if you're looking for, like, Freddy Funko uh, SDCC exclusives, just yesterday... They did a line where they take, like, the logo, like, the Freddy Funko character, and they put them in different character outfits they did the dude from the big lebowski he sold for two uh twelve hundred and sixty dollars 
What on the eBay. fuck? Jesus Christ. That's, that is not even the scratching of the surface, man. It's insane. Like, I, I really want some of the Rocky Pops. Rocky Balboa, the, mm. the boxer. And I... They haven't re-released them. And if I want Rocky, he's over $500. Ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um... Personally, for what they are, I can't see myself paying that much. I have paid a pretty penny for uh, one or two just because I really wanted them. But I do restrict myself in how much. Oh, know, my God. Dude, I looked up Balboa. 700. <laughs> 700. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a few of the, uh, the Pulp Fiction ones I want. And, dude, I mean, there's no fucking way for getting it. Insane. Or like the original Elvis Funko Pop. Mm mm. You might as well buy like a mansion that money. Oh yeah. Insane. And again, condition when you're reaching that rarity of Funko Pop, conditions everything. People go insane about the box. Unfortunately, I fall into the bad uh, psych psyche of I try I keep my Funko Pop in boxes now. I don't know what got me into that, but I get like the plastic collector. You can hate me, y'all. Um, some of them I do keep in box just because of the money that they're worth. Other ones that, like any of the Star Wars ones, I'm going to rip them. Um, but they're good as a company because of how, because of they can, they can produce such niche, uh, cult following titles. Like they can do Frasier, they can do Garfield, they can do Cheetos, mm -hmm. they can do pretty much anything they want to. And that's the beauty of Funko Pop is... Other companies like Hasbro, uh, the, the the amount of how much to produce a figure and how much to make it is going to outweigh how much to sell of just like a little crummy like uh, Cheeto, Chester the Cheetah thing. Like the, no other toy company can do that except Funko. Yeah. And the rate at which they can sell those things and produce them, I mean, they're making bank. So at the end of the day, what, what they're trying to be, I agree with. Um, like you just said, everyone has one by now. Um, and for me, living in San Antonio, the, the Funko Pop community is blooming. It's insane. There's full conventions here that take up, like, uh, abandoned malls. And they, they fill the entire mall with Funko Pop. It's insane. But right now, the money. The money what? The money is just how much is pooled in the Funko Pop community. It's insane. I looked it up. I'm looking into it. Um, right now, the most expensive pop in existence is the giant steamboat Willie, which is the Mickey Mouse. That goes. Mm. That is valued at one thousand one hundred forty. Oh my god, man! But um, I'm sure if I look it up on eBay, just to prove a point on how much it's fucking, how much scalpers uh, rack up the price. If I look up. Giant Willy Pop. If I could spell giant correctly. <laughs> Another one, if that doesn't uh, show up anything, you can look up Glow in the Dark Darth Maul Funko Pop. He was an exclusive to like a mall convention, I think. Um, dude. That, I, that personally, that's the most expensive I've seen in terms of what I collect. Um... Funko just released a glow in the dark Obi Wan Kenobi from A New Hope for the Star Wars San Diego or Star Wars even, celebration. That pop that I mentioned is so fucking rare. They they don't have them on eBay. <laughs> they don't have them on eBay. Oh god, that mean that means that's no man's territory. Yeah, that's. They have the oh wait here it is here it is I found it it's eight hundred. So don't listen to me. Yeah, yeah. You might have to look in sold, but uh, dude, the, it gets uh, nasty. Dar glow in the dark. Darth Maul, yeah. Oh, you know, oh, of, yeah. Whoa. On top of that, I think oh. Vader is even more expensive. It's, it's insane. Just a preface, it's seven thousand six hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. With twenty six yeah. watchers. Yeah. If you look at those sold pages, they sell. 
It might take them a while, but they do sell. It is insane. I mean, I just... I mean, if I had the money to throw around, sure, fuck, I'd be buying a $7,000 glow-in-the-dark dark mall, what the hell. But, insane. I mean, go go, people that are out there, you know, buying those. Uh, I'm sure their collections are pretty uh, pretty epic, but... uh. How the fuck it's insane. do you... I, don't, I just don't and understand how, how the fuck you spend $7,000 on a pop. The, the turnaround, because, like... A San Diego Comic Con exclusive is, is going to sell maybe above retail, maybe like twenty dollars, but if not, it's selling for ten dollars. And someone out there is making a flipped profit of twelve hundred dollars. Well, thank God that I can pay three hundred and forty one dollars for twenty one for twenty four months with PayPal. So <laughs> like just pay it off like a car at that point. <laughs> Going to lifelong debt. Just bought the glow in the dark Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people have a house at our age. Nah, dude, I have the glow in the dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking in the Darth Maul. Like, my glow in the dark. <laughs> oh man, it's a crazy world. Yeah, my parents pay for my tuition. What of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I found one for thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand dollars. That is insanity, dude. Wow. And if you divide that by 24 going into the 24 months, that's fucking $541 a month for a figure if you wanted to pay it off in two years' time. That is a ridiculous amount of money. I mean, at that point, I've seen there's videos on YouTube of people. I mean, like conventions are usually over pop now now there's conventions that don't even allow the sale of funko pop which is just insane i went to one and i was talking to the vendor because he had a lot of rare ones i've seen and i heard him over talking to someone i guess he he had asked what's what's your biggest sale for today he had sold he had one of the original clockwork orange funko pops which is a funko pop that is just i mean just a white whale figure and I forgot how much, but it was easily over thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars at a convention. Someone brought fifteen thousand dollars to spend on a Funko Pop. Oh my 15, god! Fifteen thousand dollars to buy a car with that money—just an insane amount of money. And like, God, just insane. It's like buying drugs. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey, man, you got you got that Funko Pop. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that is just that's insane. That is insane. Yeah. Too much fucking money. Um let me see here. Uh I I think that's all the time that we had for today. Right? Yeah, um This was a good topic. I, I definitely like talking about the Funko stuff and definitely comic collecting you i think people talk about the whole collecting world but not enough people talk about the the scum and villainy in depth scum and villainy yes out there but um yeah once again thank you all for listening in if you made it all the way to the end uh this is kind of an experiment me and my friend angus have been doing we talk about we do we we always have a lot of personal chats that i wish we had a microphone to record because we, we've talked about some pretty awesome stuff um so hope you enjoyed uh look forward to our next episode and we will listen to y'all later goodbye peace out